hey, my Jeep Creepers. All right, I'm getting all set up to go camping. Uh, I'm going to go do the Pitcher Rock Trails in beautiful Munising, Michigan, which is up in the UP. So that's going to be real fun. Uh, I'm going to go over some gear. Hopefully I don't bore you. But uh, I appreciate you guys uh, if you're interested. And these are my honest opinions on about this equipment that I'm trusting my life with. So take it with a grain of salt. Um, if you're interested in gear, stay tuned. Yes, this is my backyard. All the ladies showed up for a little late night snack. We counted nine deer today. The other ones took off. It's a couple families hanging out together. All right, so I think the most important thing to me, at least for camping, is being comfortable when you sleep. So I have looked over a few different things. I've been watching a lot of YouTubers that are really into this stuff and really test the equipment. I have decided to go with their suggestions and um, also come up with some of my own as well. So when you're sleeping in a tent, um, in backpacking, I mean, the first concern obviously is the weight. You don't want to carry too much weight and it's got to be packable, compact, right? And then um, obviously what kind of temperatures are going to be in. Uh, I'm planning on camping in a temperature um, that's going to be, you know, at the highest probably in the 30s, maybe in the 50s, depending on when I go. And it could, you know, severe weather could happen and that we could get potentially down in the 10s, maybe lower. You know, I plan on hiking up north in the UP uh, at Pitcher Rocks. It's a beautiful place. Uh, if you ever try, uh, visit Michigan, it's in Munising, Michigan in the UP. And that area is just absolutely gorgeous. If you guys are looking for a place to travel, to camp, or to hike, to kayak, you know, what have you, hey, look no further. It's probably one of the most gorgeous places in the United States. I've been to Maine, I've been to Seattle, I've seen both coasts, they're absolutely gorgeous. Upstate Michigan, like in the UP there, beautiful. Staying warm is important. There, I've seen a lot of videos of people doing all kinds of crazy things to stay warm, sleeping on snowbanks. Um, they'll put down like a reflective pad um, that's you know shiny on both sides to help uh, the R value so your heat reflects back up into you. And then sometimes they'll put down a foam pad right on top of that, um, which gives even more R value. Um, and then on top of that, they'll use an air mattress. And there's a lot of different air mattresses out there. So you could spend hundreds of dollars, near probably $1,000 just on those things, not counting your sleeping bag. You get into the sleeping bags, you could spend $1,000 on a sleeping bag. I am a little more practical, okay? Like I grew up in a time when gear wasn't infinitely expensive and uh, everybody didn't plan for Arctic expeditions in the, you know, in Antarctica or something because like, you know, we had cloth cotton bags, which I don't recommend. Do never use a cotton bag for cold weather camping because it, it holds moisture, they're heavy, they're terrible. Um, they're only good for, you know, if you're gonna camp and not backpack, I guess, they're not bad. And I still have my old ones. Um, so use polyester. You wanna use, if you have the, the means, um, down-filled polyester. Then the down, the amount of down, it could be duck or uh, goose, I believe. Uh, you can get anywhere from, I think, 100 fill all the way up to like 800, whatever they're rated at. And the price just skyrockets. Guys, I'm just telling you, I am a normal, budgetary conscious person i am not spending thousands of dollars to go backpacking i mean that's just not into that you know i want to be comfortable you know i'm not glamping and i'm not uh one of these rich guys you know uh, i wish what i'm going to use instead of all those layers is a cot they make cots that are the one i'm going to show you here i got it for 42 dollars on amazon uh link down in the description help me out guys and uh, I'm trying to not make this like a sales pitch here. This is the gear that I'm using and this is just a part of my journey. And it breaks down, it's pretty lightweight. I'm not a light guy, six foot tall, I'm over 200 pounds. I can roll around on this thing all day. I tested it out with my sleep bag already and I'm confident it's gonna do very well on my trip. All right, so the construction this thing uses is basically aluminum um, poles with bungee cord in them. It's very lightweight. Um, these are plastic, but this is pretty dang durable. I don't usually, I'm not usually a big fan of plastic, but it seems to work. And these are bowed in to hold tension. And I, you know, I can pretty much jump around on this thing. I slide around all night, no problem. You know what I mean? I had my dog on it with me earlier. He was just laying right here. He's not gonna be camping with me, but you know, he could, he could fit right there. Um, this is not for couples. They do make these uh, wider if you want to have uh, two people on the same one. 
So you can look into that. Or if you're a really large person, um, they do make these uh, a little bit you know, wider and better uh, weight uh, capacity. This is arched right here in tension. Just push down, pop it out like so. Um, these just break down like this to that size. And I mean, one of the important things obviously is that it's quick and easy. This actually will break down a little bit more too, by the way. I don't know if that helps at it at all, but this will fold into threes. Like that. So it gets pretty short. So you saw that how that goes. I don't need to really break that down too much more than it is. So those are all out. And this has two ends on it. This end right here that has this little uh, pull on it. This is where the pull, it has, it confused the heck out of me because I thought it just kind of fit in here and just, you know, you gotta crank it in. No, it actually goes in really easy. I used to use an army cot that was really hard with wrought irons and it was heavy and it was hard and just about killed yourself trying to put it together. This is easy. So this just slides down. And there's a hole on this end only, which I didn't know until I monkeyed with it. Pull the pole out. Break it down, just like so. They call these shot cords. Um, some people, I call them bungee cords, whatever. Whatever name is cool with you. Let's do the other side. This is like super quick setup, which is kind of nice because you want to get camp going. I remember being miserable setting up tents like in Boy Scouts and stuff. And, you know, after doing all day hikes, it'd start raining and just terrible weather set in and it was just miserable. So it's kind of nice having stuff that goes together really quick and easy. Um, it really helps with uh, morale, I guess, when you're hiking and bad weather happens, which it will happen. Um, all right, now I guess I'll show you, see if I can get it back in the bag that came with. That's important. So I'm just kind of figuring this out for the first time with you guys. Now, let's see, it's about yay wide. So the bag is not that wide. So this needs to be folded in half. Oh, the other thing I should have mentioned too. It has a little pocket where you can fit a couple, let's just say two cans of pop or I'll call it beverages if you're into that. Or your glasses, flashlight, whatever nighttime needs you have. All right, so now that that's folded in half, that'll fit in the bag. So I'm gonna take a crack at how this might fit in there. Normally what I like to do is wrap this like a burrito when I do tents and stuff like this. Try to equally distribute the space. So I got some of these elbows on the left and then right, up and right. See if I make a fool out of myself. Or am I a hero that can do it? My first try on live television. And I am not a super smart individual when it comes to packing. I'm more of a stick it in and see what happens kind of guy. Alright, that was my first attempt at a roll. I'm letting the pole slide in without the tent or the material. Whoops. So 
can hold that together tighter. So this is a terrible job, absolutely detestable job, and guess what? First try ever, wham, bam, fits in there. All right, let's do a quick setup now. Maybe we'll speed up the film or something because this is probably getting really boring if you're not interested in this. You take it on the ground, okay? Push this down on the ground and then pop it, like push down and it's a lot easier. Time. Um, now, this to me, I think is faster, we'll look at the stop time, than filling up, um, you know, with even one of those mechanical pumps or whatever. And who wants to listen to that noisy pump anyway? When you can just set this up, have a nice quiet bed, boom, you're good to go. All right, so since we're on the topic of talk and comfort, this is great for in your tent when you're chilling, but I hate to see it, guys. One of the best things that you can have when you're camping is a chair. Who wants to sit on a log? Who wants to be a bump on a log, right? Well, I found this chair right here from Trekology. I uh, found this guy on Walmart online. I'll try to link you in the description. And again, I am a six foot tall man over 200 pounds. This chair is, I am not joking, comfortable. Now my wife doesn't like it. She's a little bit shorter. She's like 5'4", I think. And uh, she feels like she's fleeing it back too far and falling. I did buy a chair like this before that only had three legs and I will tell you that it broke. <laughs> this one has not broken. I've kind of rocked in it, moved it around. I've tried to break this thing a little bit and it's holding up. So I'm taking this camping, so I have a nice comfortable chair. This is a hundred times easier than the other one and it's all one piece. You just pop these out, like so, and then you got this giant thing with all these poles and you just break it down. Like so. This is now broken down. And here's the material for the chair. Oh, this does have a cup holder on the side, which is nice. All right, on both sides, sorry. Here's the bag that this came in. So again, the poles. Oop, let me fold that over. What I like to do, like I said, you know, with the uh, the cot, same idea. Just pop them in here, pull them up real good. Let's see if I did this right. This feels a little long. That is way long. Why is that pole sticking out like that? Oh, I forgot to break it down. My bad. Well, let's stop the timer on that one. Boom, done. Very lightweight. Um, I'll have to look up the weight for you and I'll list it right there. Let's set this up. All right, we're on camp. Let's go, let's go, 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 go. Take this thing out. This is the second time that I built this as well. So again, this is not super duper muscle memory. This is literally me just kind of learning how this goes together with you folks. Second time. So I'm not totally, uh, not totally uh, unaware of how this goes together. All right, so these little, it's got four little rubber nubs. See those guys? You sit on the ground, and then it says Trekology on the top. You just slide that on there, slide that on there, slide that on there. You don't even have to pull it. This is not even tensioned. 
Well, this last one's a little bit tension, maybe a pound or two of force. And holy smokes, so you got a chair. Awesome. So there is two awesome products. Highly, highly recommend for camping. The next part is the sleeping bag. This is a sleeping bag by Ozark Trail, which is a Walmart brand, yes. Uh-oh, Walmart brand, that sucks, right? Nope. Um, in this case, this bag, I don't know if it says it on here. Right. Watching other videos. This is one of the few bags that you can buy, and this one's at Walmart, that actually has an ISO rating. What does an ISO rating mean? That means there's a government company that took this bag and put a dummy with a bunch of uh, thermometers in it and determined the actual temperatures that this bag's ratings are. Now, there are three ratings when it comes to sleeping bags. You have the, the top rating, which is called the comfort rating. The comfort rating is the realistic temperature that you can expect to be comfortable at, guys. Um, I've also seen, and I don't know how much I believe this, we'll find out, that the comfort rating is a female comfort rating. So if you're a female and you get cold easy, you're still gonna be comfortable at this rating. The middle rating, um, which is usually called the limit. Um, I've seen uh, that also called the male comfort rating, the middle rating, limit rating. Uh, and that's supposedly what males are comfortable at. This rating, I would not 100% um, trust. I would look at the comfort rating just so you know you're gonna be comfortable. Um, instead of the limit rating. And then lastly, there's something called the extreme rating. The extreme rating, if you look at um, everybody's review on that, it's basically, it's gonna keep you alive. That's it. You might have hypothermia. It won't, you probably won't die, but you really don't wanna count on that rating. That's extreme emergencies only rating. Like, you know, if you're in a survival situation. So, that's the nice thing that this is ISO certified, but they get kind of scanny. This says comfort level asterisk 10 degrees. Oh, good. It's a 10 degree comfort rating. That's a great rating. You know, like a zero bag, those are going to be actually pretty dang cold um, or pretty dang expensive, sorry. And it needs to be cold anyway. Like that's, if you're going to sleep on a snowbank and you're sleeping in sub-zero weather, get one of those. That's great. That's a $600 sleeping bag. This is a 40, I think $40 sleeping bag, $42 sleeping bag at Walmart right now. Guys, and it's ISO rated. There's no reason not to get this unless you've got money. Um, but anyway, back to that. So the asterisk, uh-oh. The asterisk says it's the T limit as per ISO rating. If you actually look in the instructions, and I forgot where they went, it's actually 12 degrees. So <laughs> this is kind of misleading, but at least that's on there. Um, product weight, this is a 5.7 pound sleeping bag. It's not the lightest. Yeah, you spend 600 bucks, you can go and get yourself a three pound, four pound sleeping bag with a bunch of down in it. That's great, whatever. Um, this will fit a seven foot one man with the mummy bag. That's pretty tall. Now the width on this, I thought this was super wide, two foot nine inches. I've got really wide shoulders, and I'm not exactly the lightest of them. Uh, you know, got a good old belly. And I fit in this thing pretty decently. I've got bigger sleeping bags that have more room to roll around in, but I'm gonna illustrate this bag for you. So here's the sleeping bag. I got the red and the gray one, just because I like the color. It comes in a lot of different colors. It has a double zipper. So there's a zipper at the top and there's a zipper at the bottom. It's got a little Velcro thing as well to cover the zipper. It's got a drawstring for the, uh, the head. And you can just take and unzip it down. One of the things it doesn't have that expensive bags have, I just learned this term, is vaulted feet. What is vaulted feet? Well, think of a uh, mummy or sarcophagus. Your feet will literally be a little bit higher. Why do you need vaulted feet in a sleeping bag? Well, basically, when you get in a sleeping bag and you start to compress this fabric, it loses R value. So the feet are vaulted, so you're not pressing your toes up against the top, losing insulation value. This is not vaulted. I'm a side sleeper. I think that's, again, for people that like $600 sleeping bags. This will fully unzip. 
but it doesn't fully unfold. The toes always stay one piece, so you can't use this as a blanket if you were thinking of doing that. So I'll just mention that. Here's the second zipper right here. Um, there's a little bit of threads. You know, this is Walmart, so I noticed a couple loose threads here and there. That doesn't bother me for 40 whatever, $42, whatever this bag was. I'm getting in here. And look at that. I even stepped my feet first on this cot. That's uh, usually a no-no. But it'll support it. Zip myself up. And get down in the bag. Now, as I said, I have tight shoulders, or big shoulders, so it gets a little bit tight for me towards the top. And just so I don't feel suffocated, like I can get both my arms in and everything, but like, it's a little bit tight for me. Like, I don't feel, I feel a little bit claustrophobic because of that. So if you feel claustrophobic, you might want a wider bag. I'm not sleeping in super cold temperatures, so my arms will probably be out, unless I'm really cold. And then here's the mummy part. And this is my first mummy bag. So you just get in there. I'm not seven foot tall, so you know, whatever. But I got that pulled down a little bit. And now I'm in my sleeping bag with both arms. And uh, you know, I'm pretty well covered. Um, now let's say, oh, well, I toss and turn throughout the entire night. As you can see, I can toss and turn. Oh, oh I lay on my belt. Or, oh, I'm gonna lay like this. Arms up. Pretty comfortable. I still need to get a pillow, guys. I haven't looked for one yet, but uh, maybe the next video I'll show you a pillow. And it's slippery enough where I can roll around. And the nice thing about a cot versus a mat a lot of mats, you gotta like attach your padding to your sleeping bag and all that so the stuff doesn't shoot out on you. Because, you know, I've been camping a ton of times and, uh, you know, you lose all that stuff unless you strap it down. It's kind of annoying. All right. So I think I can just roll it up as it is. In the old days, we kind of pushed as much air out as you can. Pretty sure I can just do it just like that. Let's see. Not even trying. Kind of, kind of half ass in this. Then you just roll it and stick it in the bed. Let's find out. kind of just squish her in. Pretty easy, guys. I really suck at folding sleeping bags. And that went in really easy. And then it has this little kind of uh, cover, which I like a lot. I've never had one like this before. You just kind of pull this up and over it, like so. And then let's see, where's the buckle at? Oh, got the buckle caught. There's a buckle right here. You just snap that together. And then if you need it tighter, it's got all these cinch straps. You just pull it down. You press that thing down on one, two, three buckles for compression. One for the cap, two for the bags. Boom, Bob's your uncle. That is a pretty cool sleeping bag setup. This will be just the first part of my camping pack out series. Um, I will cover other things in my next video, such as my sleeping, not my sleeping, my backpack, my cook gear, my water filtration, um, stove, all of that. We'll cover all that in detail and kind of test it out and give you a first impression 
and I will also be filming on the trail as well so you get to come with me and see some beautiful scenery in Pitcher Rocks, Michigan and Munising, Michigan on the UP and uh, yeah it'll be pretty awesome but anyway till next time guys stay tuned for more Jeep Curious.